Formula ZX10 Masters Cup action is proudly brought to you by Red Square for ultimate activation. Round two action of the ZX10R Masters Cup, proudly brought to you by Red Square here at Swatkops. All part and parcel of the Extreme Festival now, not the fashion for speed as we saw at the beginning of the season. And joining the Extreme Festival means that they are the top end of motorcycle racing in this format. With equal motorcycles and the same brand of tyres, the Bridgestones will be looking to rip things up here. And the crowds are going to be entertained in a big way. The boss man and COC for the Red Square ZX10R Masters Cup, Johan Faree, is going to be in for a busy day today, there's no doubt about it, with the action about to start out on track. Crowds are making their way to get the greatest vantage points that they can around the circuit, and they've come early, because it's really important to get you early with such big crowds, and the entertainment about to head out onto the black stuff. Let's have a look and see what happens in qualifying, as they make their way out onto the circuit now, for the first time in anger. Almost immediately, Graham Bambara setting a almost lap record pace with a 103.967. Action Jackson still getting to grips with this bike and with a new format of racing. Yoko Kos looked pretty good as well. He was up in the top three and pushing hard to try and bump out Gareth Besaidenote. He was pushing hard and looking for that pole position. Everybody was. Michael Smith looked pretty tasty as well as he came through into Compendium Insurance Corner and trying to get those lap times down. He got down to a 105 eventually. Besaidenote decided to go out and attack the front end and possibly spoil the day for Bambradar. John Collard pulling in after a 106 dead, getting him into the fifth position on the grid and second row. Wayne Spice is going to have a busy day. He's not only involved in the ZX10s, but also in the Bridgestone Challenge. The same note, setting the lap times and going quicker. A 1037 there. And it looks like Graham Bambara is going to have to go at it again. He might have just got blocked ever so slightly there, or maybe he's using Yucca Close to get him through the slipstream. He does. It's a 1036 and he pulls into the pole position. So it's Van Bredar from the side note and Yaku Coast to front row. As always at the Extreme Festival, great to see the stalls out. Chance to get some food, get yourself a little bit of memorabilia and maybe get yourself some SBK eyewear as well. But as the riders are ready to go now, it's great to see new riders coming into this with Cliffy Ogle being one of the new youngsters coming through into this category. When I say youngsters, they've all got to be over 35, of course. But you've got Lafris Fritz, Aubrey Marais, you've got uh, Del Nivenhuis there as well. And fantastic to see, as always, Action Jackson in the paddock and getting to grips with the new format of racing he's involved with. Rob Morf is here as well. And he's certainly looking for a chance to get to the front end as soon as he can. Look out for Dal Nivenhuis and Lafris Fritz will be in the mix there with Teddy Brook, the silver surfer. Teddy is always a fast man and has actually qualified right at the front end of the field too, just within that top eight. And good to see Aubrey Marais from First Digital back in the pack. It's time to go racing now, and these guys are all getting themselves psyched up to get out on the black stuff for the very first time here at SWAT Corps. And race one, the man to catch will be Van Breda. Tire warmers, all important, getting the tires up to about 55 degrees centigrade, ensuring that that rubber is completely sticky and ready to go now. And it looks like most of these riders are good to go for race one as well. Yaku Kos will be looking to maybe just move himself up ever so slightly. From third place, he's going to look to uh, possibly take the win here today. He is always good at SWAT Corps. Teddy Brook will be running one of our GoPros and giving us some onboard action as they make their way out, out of the pit lane. Sofiso Temba, unfortunately, on the sidelines, still waiting to get his bike sorted out and hopefully will be with us at the next round. Someone who's definitely with us now joins us in the commentary booth, Dave Peterson. How's this lineup for the second round of ZX10R Masters Cup? 
going to be pretty interesting, Greg, because the lap times that they did during qualifying put Fumbrada and Besaden out side by side on the grid with one tenth of a second between them. So I think it's going to come down to tactics in the race, tyre conservation as well. As we see, Hannes de Foss, our beautiful umbrella lady, I mean man, <laughs> standing there on the grid. You know, you have to pay kind of double for that kind of action. But uh, the second row is also going to be interesting. Michael Smith, Teddy Brook and John T. Collard also split by only a couple of hundreds of a second between the three of them. Look out for the action coming from the second row. Absolutely. As we look at the front row for today's race, it is Graham from Stefan Stefan Stocks, Kawasaki, Gareth Besaidenot right beside him. And competitor from Springs, Yaku Ghost. We'll be back after the break with more action from the Red Square. ZX10 Masters Cup Round 2. Welcome back to a big crowd here at SWAT Corps who are about to be entertained now for race one of the Red Square ZX10R Masters Cup. They're on the line. It's all about Van Bredar and Besaid Note who set the pace early this morning in qualifying. Can they now turn that into race pace and possibly into a race win? They come to line up. We're on board here with Yaku Khos. That red flag will move to the right-hand side, the left-hand side of your screen. And as it moves across, we go into the start procedure. Watch for the lights to go on. As soon as they go out, we go racing. That five-second board is up. And who's going to have what it takes off the line? Absolutely perfect start from all the front row there as they head through and second row also just as good. Besaid note behind Van Bredar. Van Bredar with a little bit of an injection there, getting away so ever so slightly. And it looks like what a start there from Collard. Collard's up to third place under attack from Smith and from Khos as they go through there side by side. All oh, rider down. Whoa, two riders down. Whoa. Two riders that down in turn two. Action Jackson. <laughs> yeah, Action Jackson involved in there. He's the man who's gone down in turn two and he's bringing us the action right from the word go. Hopefully he's okay. Should be able to get back up again. No, the bike is stuck in the middle of the circuit, which means safety car, possibly a red flag as well, Dave. Also, that's the medic's car straight away, attending to Gareth Jackson. We're on board with Teddy Brook. The red flag is out. The guys are looking. Oh, and down. We've got a crash right on the side of the track. Johan LaRue somehow has run into the back of one of the other riders. It could have been John T. Collard just ahead of him. Red flag is out. Here's a replay of what happened, Greg. Yeah, coming up onto the top shelf there. Collard sits up and, oh, LaRue goes almost right. In fact, he does. He goes straight into the back of John T. Collard's wheel. I don't think he saw the red flag, and that's why he got caught up with the, the rider who's braking. You can see he's not looking too good. He's on the sideline, eventually moves a little bit there, but big con concern there for two riders. Jackson here at turn two, and LaRue up at turn between five and six. The medics car straight away screaming up to the top of the shelf, Greg, to have a quick look to see if they can help out with Johan LaRue lying next to the track. We hope he's going to be okay. The best medical care available here at Swa Corps as they put him back into that ambulance and take him away for observation. Don't see too much movement there. I think he's going to be okay though, Greg, hopefully. No, I'm sure he's okay. Remember, he is one of the oldest competitors in this category on the Avadan Kawasaki. You see the Kawasaki on the sideline and everybody watching from the side, hoping that the riders that went down are okay. And the crowd now standing by for the restart. Van Bredar will take up his position once again. Besaid note, this time we're on board with him now, possibly for the start on his ZX-10R. As the lights are about to go out, let's see if he gets the drop on Van Bredar this time. He's going to try and get him down into turn one, Compendium Insurance Corner. The lights go out. It's a good start there, once again from Collard. But this time he just gets a little bit of a wheelie. Good to see that Teddy Brook is back in the pack as well, even though he was involved in the little incident and showed us a couple of, uh, of those onboard shots that we were asking for. But now, under braking. Look at this, absolutely brilliant stuff. Mid-pack and around the outside, here comes Spicer. What a move there from him. Wayne Spicer not shy to go around the outside. He is going around the outside of Andre van Polenski. As we go up to the fastest section of the track, and Greg, good news from the pits is that Johan Leroux is sitting up and talking in the ambulance, so he's going to be fine. And good news from Gareth Jackson's point of view as well. He's A-OK. -okay. Hopefully he'll be back in time for race number two as they head up to the top of the hill now. The fastest part under braking just before they get to that Mercedes-Benz turn. And as they come through there, Van Bredar is opening up a bit of a margin. Smith is all over close, and you can see John T. Collard not getting the drive because of that wheelie off the line. He's now stuck down in about eighth place. Right behind him is the dog doctor, Stewie Christie, having a brilliant ride. Mornay Potkid and Rob Morph, new to the series, is lying in ninth place at the moment, just ahead of Rodney McLaughlin. In fact, he's challenging out with uh, John T. Collard. That's how hard and high up he is. Collard, remember, rider of the day at the previous round, so he certainly knows what to do. On board here with Yaku Kosi, we come out of turn one, heading to turn two, trying to close that gap down on Besaid Note, and also very much aware of the rider on his tail. That'll be his stable mate, Michael Smith. GBB is disappearing at the front though, Stephanie Stocks Kawasaki, he's already pulled, 
Greg, two seconds just in that lap. Unbelievable ride coming out of Amberdahl. We saw the kind of pace he had this morning. He was so confident. He pulled into the qual after qualifying and just said, you know what, I've done enough. Then he was woken up properly by Besaid Note. And this time out, he's not going to let Besaid Note have any answers. Michael Smith on the brakes. He's right up on a Yakko Chos. What a maneuver on the brakes. Michael Smith could be the dark horse in this race. Look at the angle he's getting on that ZX-10. Now he's pushing it to the limit, that's for sure. He wants passed and he definitely wants to get through on his teammate. As they come down under braking, they're Teddy Brook under attack now. The 10 bike there of Greg Besaid Note. Also having a super run here in this first heat. This is the second start of the first heat, but he's right up there. And he's actually ahead of Collard. Collard is making up ground though. Watch out for Jonti. His times are dropping. Greg Besaid Note, we hardly mentioned him. He's having a tremendous run. And then further back with Wayne Spicer from Follenstein, Ian Harwood, they are locked in a battle there. That's for 12th down to 13th place and 14th. You know, a nice ride there just outside the top 10 from those four riders as they head to the top of the hill now. Van Bredar has pulled a massive margin further down the field. That's 25. Great to see that man fighting hard. Monet Portrita has definitely enjoyed the step into ZX10s and is becoming a big threat in that mid-pack. On board with Teddy Brook as we go the top end of the circuit. Then we'll drop down a sharp right hand and then down into the left. Just a little bit further back is Roddy McLaughlin on the count air bike. He's got Wayne Spicer in company with him and Andre van Follensty. Look at van Follensty. He's improved so much in the last couple of races. And right behind them is Ian Hardwood on the Bridgestone bike. Oh, so having a fantastic run there on that TRP machine as he comes into threat now, possibly for a top 10. The mid pack battle, and of course, third place battle is what we're looking at right now as Michael Smith just seems to have lost a little bit of ground there on Khosi. Behind them, they're starting to line up, and Collard is one of them. Collard wants through on Besaid Note. Greg Besaid Note under attack from John T. Collard into turn two. Possibly might have squeezed through. I think Michael Smith's actually closed up just on that corner. These are those mid pack dices going on. Number 42, great show, Rodney McLaughlin. He's having a go with Andre from Follensteen. McLaughlin is starting to improve tremendously. Just looking at those lap times. Close, top of the shop, and he's got Smith all over him like a rash. You know, Smith wants by, there's no doubt about it. McLaughlin wants by too. Remember, Rodney McLaughlin, one of the other riders who's doing battle in both of the categories today, not only in ZX10s, but also in the Bridgestone Challenge. So he's got a busy day in the saddle, and it might just take its effect a little bit later on, particularly when you've got to do the slightly longer ZX10 races. The podium battle continues. That's third and fourth places on the track. Chris versus Smith. Then we get the dice just behind him, Wayne Spicer, Finn Follenstee, Ruan Obol's in the mix as well with Ian Harwin, LaFrance Fritz just behind him, he's having a great ride. Yeah, a nice run there from the new man, Cliffy Ogle in shot right now, good to see him stepping up. Off for Ducati and onto a ZX-10, going to be a bit of a change up in terms of his riding style, but it's super to have one of the younger competitors now involved in ZX-10s. Now these midfield battles rage on, and that's what's great about this category, that Everybody gets out on track and has a battle with somebody else, somebody of the same skill level as yourself. Fritz and Oberholtz are going at it. Prilla just behind them. This is Schoes, still ahead of Smith. Smith hasn't been able to close that gap down or find a way past. And what Yaku must be uh, very happy about is that Michael Smith is about to come under attack in a big way from this man that we're on board with, the Brook Refrigeration ZX-10 of Teddy Brook. And he's now applying the pressure on to Michael Smith as they get down into GNH Transport Corner. Great on the brakes for Teddy there. I think he's been conserving his tyre quite well because it looks to me like Michael is just dropping off the pace ever so slightly. From Bredar though, he's got a commanding lead in this race. He's disappeared out the front. What a performance from the Stephanie Stocks man. He's rolled off ever so slightly now knowing he's coming to the end of the race. So he's just controlling things from the front ahead of Besaid Note. That's the gap he's got now. There's Gareth Besaid Note. Behind them is Khos and Smith. So it's pretty equidistant there between the gaps for first and second and the battle down to third place. The battle for third place is about to heat up though. I think with only a lap and a half to go, it's now time for Smith to open things up. This is Besaid Note trying to close down, but it's just too far I think now. And a little bit of a wobble there going into turn five. Gareth looks like the front end diving tremendously on that bike, battling on the brakes a wee bit. Maybe he wants to harden up suspension for the second race. Teddy Brook, his bike looks ever so smooth, and he's definitely closed a bit on Michael Smith, even on this lap as well. There's Rodney McLaughlin, count there. Wow, he has got Wayne Spicer all over him. Spicer, he's well known for last lap maneuvers, so I think he's going to have to be very careful at this one. Van Valensie also looking to pounce if there's a possibility further up there. You've got Greg beside note. Look at Stewie Christie and, of course, the 55 bike there of Rob Morph. Morph has just morphed straight into this category and made it look like he's supposed to be here since it started. Great to have Rob Morph and the Morphine Racing Kawasaki in this battle. Spicer looking to make a move as we go into the last lap of this race. Graham from Bedar pulls out. Wow, that's 2.6 seconds lead. He got that gap on the first lap, uh, Greg, and he's held it 
all the way through the race, just just controlling the pace. Just maintaining very like our national champion guy does as well, Seller. But it's all about this man, also an ex-national champion and a multiple champion. One look over the shoulder just to make sure. Didn't really have to worry about that though. He knows how far back Mercedes Node is at this stage. His dad would have held the pit board out for him every single lap and would have said, plus two, plus two, and that's what you need to do in this type of racing. If you want to win in the Red Square ZX-10 Masters Cup, checkers are waiting. Across the line for the Stefanuti Stocks Kawasaki man. Bambadar taking the win ahead of a Satan note. Yakukos looks like he might just hang on to take third place and does. Beating out his stablemate there, Michael Smith. Teddy Brook in fifth place. John T. Collard in sixth ahead of a Satan note. And the Dog Doctor down in eighth. What a tremendous race. This first time back at SWAT Corps. Round two of the series. And in the pit lane as they take their crash helmets off, they're all really happy with their rides. Discussing tactics. Graham from Bara with his pit crew just saying, Everything went according to plan. And you can see from Besaidnut's point of view, explaining that he just couldn't close that gap down on Van Bredar. Collard tried hard, wait for race two, he says. Mark Weiss from Red Square, thanks so much for all the support. We really do appreciate it. And join us after you've reloaded for race two. Welcome back on board here with Michael Smith at SWAT Corps through GNH Transport Corner coming to take up his position for race number two now of the Red Square ZX-10R Masters Cup. Nice big field of 20 riders making their way back out, only two riders not getting back on track and we wish them a speedy recovery now, both uh, LaRue and Jackson. But it's Van Bredar who was the man to beat in race number one and he certainly looks fired up now for race two. But Besodenote I think might have something up his sleeve and he's going to try and close that gap down. Jakukos will certainly be looking to get onto the front and maybe take a win here. Under starter's orders, Johan Ferri points to the lights, the riders pay attention, revs are climbing and the race is on from it all. Once again, a great start. Good start from Collard, good start from Teddy Brook. Teddy Brook is second into turn one. Where did that come from? The silver surface on fire now as he heads down towards turn two. He's got Khos all over the back of him and Khos looking oh, immediately to go on the inside. Nearly <laughs> squeezes him out. Good manoeuvring right through the pack. Look at where Smith ended up. Michael Smith had a terrible start. He's down in about 10th place coming out of that first and second turn. He has got a massive mountain to climb now. But Brook is on fire. And look at that Poseidon note, only down in fourth place. Smith already up to five. Jonty Collard right on his tail. And then the 10 bike there of Greg Poseidon note, just behind Collard. Stewie Christie coming up to turn four. Looked like he was going to go on the inside grass there. He was taking such a tight line. Probably is quite a good grass tracker. You know, I think he spotted something he wanted to take to the vet later on, just to make sure that the animal was okay. He saw something growing there. But look at this dice, John T. Collard, not the greatest of starts. Stewie is just behind him, as is Greg Besaidenut. Similar start to race one, actually. Look at the light as they come down. You can see that light is going to be in the eyes as they go up the hill. Now, one thing to be concerned about, though, is Besaidenut's start. He is not even in contention at this stage with Van Braun. He's watching Van Braun disappear as he's tucked in behind two riders that he's got to try and find a way through on. One is Host, one is Brook. As they come across the line and complete that first lap, every single one of the riders still up and riding and uh, being led out by Van Bredar and the tail gunner there, Cliffy Ogle. It looks like the lap times haven't dropped off at all. Van Bredar lapping at lap record pace with those new Bridgestone R11 tyres. So that says a lot for the tyre around Swatkov's Raceway. Now the rubber is certainly uh, a crucial part of your motorcycle and since inception Bridgestone have been the choice of the ZX10s as they come under braking now. The Brook Refrigeration ZX-10 off Teddy Brook. Oh, oh, there you go. I thought that might be coming. I was waiting for someone to dive up the inside. And Besaid Note on cue. Up the inside, getting through on Brook. And now leaving Brook and Smith to fight it out. From it all, huge gap already. Now Smith, he comes up on Teddy Brook. Down in the final turn. Can he squeeze it up on the inside? He lets the brakes go. He flicks it over on the left-hand side. And he's through on Teddy Brook. Now, making up some position now. Brook falling by the wayside ever so slightly. Further back, 34 is Ruan Holzer. He has got a hard charging 48 there. That is Aubrey Marais. Marais on the first digital bike, fighting hard there. And the rut pin racing machine of Lafras Fritz is in that battle too. So that's the battle for 18, 19, 20 and 21 place on the track. These guys are holding nothing back. Great dice going on for second, third and fourth. With Smith, Teddy Brook, John T. Collard just behind them. And how's he shots of... Uh, Dale Nievenhuis and Ruin Oberholzer, they're having a big dice with Lafraz Fritz, Rutpin Racing, putting in his fastest lap of the day. Yeah, good to see their massive improvement coming out of those new riders. Oh, Smith runs wide, Teddy Brook mm. takes a similar line through there, maybe just out of uh, sympathy, 
Then further back, the charge is coming. Greg Beside Note is looking to try and go there with Jonty Collard and hopefully keep out the attack coming from the Dog Doctor, who's just behind. We're on board here with Yoko Kos as we go into the final corner. Oh, I thought he was going to dive up the inside, Gareth Beside Note. I thought that was going to be the move coming in the final turn, but Yoko Kos, the last of the late breakers, holds him off. So Gareth Beside Note has got his work cut out as Frambradar disappears out the front of this track. Sven Grun has been working hard there with Poseidon to try and up the pace of the man as well as the motorcycle. It worked well in terms of qualifying, but he just can't put it into race pace just yet. But just be wary of it. I'm telling you right now, Gareth Poseidon is up for a win very soon. You're looking for that second place anyway. As Ian Harwood, he banks it over as they go behind the Lafraz Fritz and Ruan Oberholzer. Nice ride, nice battle between those guys as well. Harwood pushing hard on the new man, and even is just soaking up that pressure. Speaking of pressure, well, the pressure at the front end has not been even felt by this man. He's absolutely on fire today and looking for four out of four in the start of the season. Remember, three times in this championship. Whoa, and he's passed. Oh, Gareth Besaidenot, how's that on the inside? Big move there from Besaidenot. Absolutely perfectly done under braking and up into second place now ahead of Khos. Going back to my thought as we go into the back markers there. Remember, there's three times in this championship that uh, the champion has gone back-to-back -back victories in every single race of the season. So I think that's what Graham Van Bredaar is looking to do. The problem is, is that number one plate gets very heavy yeah, yeah. every single year that you take it back out there. 100% right, it's not easy to do. But here they go, coming into the closing stages now. And Besaidno is pulling away from Khos. Khos has got a very similar gap there down to his teammate Michael Smith. And Teddy Brook just hasn't had an answer. After a phenomenal start, he's just settled down and going to probably look for that fifth place. But it's a win in Class C, remember. And Wayne Spicer still at it with Rodney McLaughlin. And there is the dog doctor, Stewie Christie, on bike number 65. Right behind him is Mornay Potkita, riding in Class A. Don't forget, Greg, we've got Class A, B and C, dependent on your age group. Yeah, 100%. You've got vets, super vets, grand vets. And old guys, <laughs> yeah, old, old guys. Exactly. And Teddy Brook is leading Class C ahead of Stewie Christie. So that's first and second. Andre from Follensty is third in Class C at the moment. That's the old, old guys class. Yeah, but uh, old, leading old. Class B and leading overall with one lap to go is Van Bredaar. Gareth Besaidon leads Class A ahead of Khos and Smith in terms of the top three there for Class A. These riders have about three kilometers to go in this race. Stewie Christie up on the inside of Rob Morph. He does it on the brakes. Christie picks up another position. Uh, the Dog Doctor is certainly having a great day in the saddle today. It's super to see him when he's in this kind of pace and fighting there with a couple of new guys. Front end though, it's all been the whole day. Stefanuti stocks Kawasaki. Any time he was bet, it was once in qualifying, but he went out and sorted that out almost instantaneously. So I think this is going to be a difficult man to beat this season with the kind of pace he's finding and the rhythm he gets into so easily. Peter Labaskakni and Les from Bredar in the pit lane will be so happy with us. They've worked so hard on that motorcycle. Michael Smith, he's settled down in fourth place. I don't think he's going to do anything on Jakub Khos at this point in the race. But it's from Bredar out front. The bike looking absolutely perfect. No squirming under the brakes. Has a quick look over his shoulder. No, Graham, don't worry, there's nobody there behind him. Van Bredar going to take the overall win as well as Class B ahead of Greg Besaid Note. And all the way down in 12th place, Wayne Spicer will take third place in the Class Bs. But it's all about the chicken flag and that overall that's important to these riders. And that's exactly why he's pushed so hard. He has rolled off. You can see why Besaid Note is closing in. Besaid Note's going to take second place and the win in Class A. We need the flag. Raise the flag for the last time today in the Red Square ZX10 Masters. It's going to be Graham from Radar, Gareth Besaid Note, Yaku Khos, Michael Smith. Teddy Brook, John T. Collard, Stewie Christie and Greg Besaidenot rounding out the top eight. Having a look at the championship points after round two, it's perfect points for Graham Van Bredaar, four out of four ahead of John T. Collard. And that's a great turn up for the books there for Collard to be ahead of Host Smith and Besaidenot. We've all got lots of work to do to catch race winner today, Van Bredaar. Very happy pole and the double win. Um, but just a massive thanks to my team. They sorted me the perfect bike once again this weekend. Uh, my sponsors were this side uh, today, so thanks very much for coming to watch. Thanks to Stephanie T. Stocks and Jonathan. Uh, big thanks to Bridgestone, our class sponsors, Red Square, Kawasaki, Bridgestone. Uh, thanks, guys. Without you, we wouldn't be here, and it was a fantastic day's racing. Thanks to the organisers. The track was a bit oily, but they managed to get us out there once again in a nice, clean race. Thank you very much. A nice run coming out of Yaku Kos, as always, let's catch up with him. It went much better than the previous round here, uh, we're starting to, to learn the bike and I think you can still get a bit more out of it, but yeah, uh, we're happy with the results today and um, I think it's going to get better from here. One of the best rides we've seen in a long time out of the Dog Doctor for the Eastern Vetry Kawasaki team, Rider of the Day.
I just had a fantastic day. Um, yeah, I started uh, qualified 10th, uh, finished 9th in the first race, started 10th in the second race, finished 7th. Uh, but I've got to really, you know, JLR should be there as well too, and uh, I'm really sorry he's in hospital. LaRue with some rib injuries, and we wish him all the very best for a speedy recovery. Another man who went down was Action Jackson. So I needed to make up a couple of spots going into turn one and turn two. Got through turn one okay on the outside, came into turn two, realized it was a little bit too fast, uh, a little bit faster than it should have been. Uh, couldn't stop, ended up going into the back of one of the other riders unfortunately and went down. We wish both those riders a speedy recovery and a fantastic day's racing as always with the Red Square ZX10R Masters Cup and heading to the TRP podium. Celebrations for our top three riders here today. And it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not anybody can catch Graham Van Bedaar on the 27th of April at the East London Grand Prix circuit. All the ZX10 Masters Cup action is proudly brought to you by Red Square for ultimate activation.